I'm going to talk a little about the coronavirus job retention scheme. So we've had an awful lot of questions about this and how it might um, impact employers and their staff. So the coronavirus job retention scheme is a scheme where effectively the government are going to cover 80% of the cost of keeping your employees on the books if they're going to be furloughed. So if you get to a point where there is not enough business to continue to run and run your payroll and pay your staff and keep them on board, then you need to lay them off and effectively furlough them. Now, this relates to all or it's eligible for all employers who are laying off staff. And by laying off, we mean staff that are laid off but not sacked. They're people who um, you've sent home and have told that they can't do any more work for you because potentially there is no work for them to do. So it's effective from the 1st of March to the 30th of June. And as far as we know, one of the rules that were stated, which has been um, bounced around sort of various accountancy forums and uh, em employee forums that I've seen, as far as we know, this applies to all staff that are on payroll as of the 28th of February are eligible. So anybody who starts afterwards is not eligible for this scheme. Now that may change, but those were the rules as they were first um, announced by the government. So the government will pay 80% of wages up to £2,500 per month. So that's approximately 35000 a year, 35, 37500 a year as a gross wage. If you've got employees that are on a much bigger wage than that, it's up to you whether you as an employer want to pay that or can pay that additional top up fee to bring them to their normal wage or whether you don't, you just pay the um, two and a half thousand pounds. Now we think this is 80% of gross wage. Um, and as I said, it relates to furloughed staff. So those that are laid off, but not sacked, they're the ones that you've sent home and are not working, but they're not off sick. If they're off sick and they're being covered by SSP and potentially company sick pay, then that is their reason for being off from work, not the fact that they are furloughed. So it might be that after their 14 days of SSP, they then go on to furlough. So you can then get that 80% of their wage recovered under this scheme. Now, whilst they're working for you, but they are on your payroll, but they're not physically working, they are still accruing holiday and you must pay them as normal through payroll. So the government isn't paying your employees, you're running payroll, you then um, claim the 80% back and you pay your staff. Now, hopefully there's enough cash in the business to pay your staff before you get the money back through the rebate scheme. If not, then you might have to look at the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme to get enough funds to pay your staff. So the rebate scheme is currently in development. So we know it's coming, but it's not there. What we do know is that you have to designate staff as furloughed workers and you have to notify them in writing that they are furloughed workers, the effective date of them being furloughed and the fact that from that day on, they could not, should not and will not be expected to do any more work for you. If you send somebody home and they're working for you, then they're still employed, they're not furloughed. So you can't claim 80% of their wages. Now, we know that there's an online portal under development. We know that we're going to have to upload a list of, infect of affected workers, those that have been notified, and their employee details and their earnings. And HMRC will have the right to audit our systems at some point later in time to make sure that we are doing what we said we were doing and we are correctly furloughing employees. Now, we think that the first payments are expected to be by the end of April. Now, they did say the first payments are expected to be paid by the end of April. They didn't say all payments will be um, affected by the end of April. So I suspect the scheme will be set up. There'll be a mass influx of people applying for the coronavirus job retention scheme, but not all payments will be made um, at the end of April. There will be a catch up process. This is just too huge a, a system and a process to implement and have everybody paid on time, I, I suspect. Now, one question that I've seen being bounced around in forums is, can you move staff in and out of furlough? Well, the truth is we don't know yet. We haven't had 
a full um, criteria set by the government and we don't know exactly what all the rules are, but we suspect that as businesses contract and reduce and as they change their offering and as they try to move their businesses online and as people start to go back to work, there'll be phases where people are on payroll, people might be phased into furlough. So you might have some of your employees going into furlough later than others, depending on how your business winds down. And it will be the same for winding up. So I suspect there will be flexibility in this scheme and its criteria to allow you to furlough people in and out as business requirements change. Otherwise, businesses just won't survive. Um, the challenge is going to be covering March payroll if you've already been adversely affected by COVID-19. And there, I think, we will have to start looking at the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme to see about getting enough funds in the short term to make sure that you can pay your March payroll if this is going to be an issue for you and if you've been adversely affected. Now, I do have another slide which I want to ping. So these are some of the questions that um, are doing the rounds in. We've had these questions from clients. Um, I've seen them in various forums and accounting forums and, and things. So is this 80% of gross or net wages? We think it's likely to be 80% of gross wages because the definition in the announcement was all employment costs. So we assume that includes PAYE, national insurance and pen employers pension. Um, does it include wages and dividends for director only um, or directors with minimum payroll and maximum dividends? No. So far as we know, it only applies to salary only. So it may be that as directors, this is not the most effective way of paying yourself when you um, are trying to pay your own bills. It's also likely that as a director, you are going to be, have to be paying your staff. You're going to be, have to be running your business. You're dealing with um, you know, managing the bank, doing cash flow forecasts, trying to keep the business going or trying to reduce the, the business um, as we go into lockdown. So the likelihood is that this doesn't apply to you if you are a director shareholder in your own business. Um, there will be other things that do, but it's quite likely that you won't be able to properly furlough yourself as a director unless you literally have seized trading and there is nothing else for you to do to run your business. The question then is, at what point do you unfurlow yourself to start building things up again as we start going back to normal, which will happen? Um, so do we have to pay the additional 20%? If the government's going to pay 80%, do we have to pay the additional 20%? No, it's optional. So if you can pay it and if you want to pay it, then great, go ahead. If you can't, then no, you don't have to. Um, why two and a half thousand? Where did that figure come from? The government have said this is the median wage for British people in work. So it's equivalent to roughly 35 to 37 and a half thousand pounds a year. Now, does this include agency workers? So if you're temping, does it include you? It's not clear yet. Um, so unlikely, I expect there'll be another exception or announcement to cover agency workers. Um, what are the alternatives to furloughing? Uh, well, really, it's redundancy or being laid off. So my recommendation would be if you are likely to be able to recover your business, then furlough as many people as you have to as soon as you have to to save the business and to keep your um, employee pool going. Um, can the employee refuse to be furloughed? Well, technically, yes, so far as I understand. Are they likely to? Unlikely. I suspect they would much rather be at home being paid 80% of their wage with the chance that their job is saved and the business can pull through um, rather than take uh, redundancy. If they take redundancy or um, if, if you can't furlough them and they refuse to work, you either then make them redundant because the job no longer exists, but there's no cash in the business to pay the redundancy, so they'll lose out, or you lay them off because that's what your um, employment contracts allow you to do. Maybe they haven't been there for very long. Either way, the, the employee is more than likely to lose out if they don't accept the furloughing. Now, another qu question is, can staff work? Absolutely not. The whole point of furloughing is that these staff cannot work, should not work, 
must not work. So they cannot be working from home and doing the occasional bit logging in to help you as a business. If they're working, they're employed and you have to pay them or you know, perhaps cut their wages or whatever it takes to, to get through this crisis. If they're not working at all, then they're furloughed and you can claim the 80% of their salary or the two and a half thousand, whichever is appropriate through this scheme. Can they study though? So say you have um, employees that need to learn a new skill or are in training, um, perhaps you you know, employ accountants or um, you know, solicitors or, or whatever who are in training, can they study? Um, apparently, yes. So uh, as far as I can tell, yes, we're allowed to have our staff study and improve their skills. They're just not allowed to work. Um, so this is a very, very high level um, set of rules and criteria so far for the coronavirus job retention scheme. And we do expect they will change and be clarified as the days and the weeks progress. We'll keep you updated.